Bienvenue à tous, bienvenue aux reporters ici en France 24. Je suis Marc Owen. Une dangereuse tension est still looming over Nagorno-Karabakh. Luke Schrager est notre reporter qui a été là. Luke, après la guerre entre l'Arménie et l'Azerbaïdjan, sur cette enclave en 2020, et la perte de at least 6,000 military lives split between these two countries. Why are they still at loggerheads over the enclave? Well, you have to look at the situation that was left in the outcome of uh, the 2020 war. Uh, seven districts that the Armenians had been holding around the Gorna Karabakh since the end of the war in the 90s are now back in uh, Azerbaijan's hands. They were ceded to them under the ceasefire deal, and that's left uh, a lot of uh, Azerbaijani forces along the border that was never really a thing during the Soviet era and that no one had ever really had to confront. And with uh, Azerbaijan seeking to consolidate its positions and maintain the pressure on Yerevan, we've seen uh, the border incidents that we're about to see in the report. Luke Schrager with the report with Ashwin Verdian and Abdallah Malkawi. Let's take a look. Welcome to Shornuch village in Sunik province in southern Armenia. On the way in, a sign in Azerbaijani welcoming visitors. The left-hand side of the road is under Azerbaijan's control, the right, Armenia's. Between the two, Russian soldiers play the mediators. The situation has left the Armenian villagers in complete disarray. At the age of 71, Anahit has now lost her home and is living in temporary lodgings that are barely fit for the purpose. Anahit has just a few possessions left. Even the house was lent to her. While she gets help from the government and will soon be given a new home higher up in the village, it's still hard to accept her new reality. Since the last war in Nagorno-Karabakh and the loss of much land to Azerbaijan, Baku's now stationed troops right on the Armenian border, leaving the nation's territorial integrity in question. The mayor of Shornokh explains how his village has been cut in half, with 12 families losing their homes. The other side of a de facto border imposed and drawn unilaterally by Azerbaijan. The shape of the border evolved repeatedly during the Soviet era. At the time, it was purely an administrative boundary, but since the collapse of the USSR, Armenia and Azerbaijan have fought over several territories, with each pointing to their own maps. <laughs> The 
ambos y estoner estaba más suerte de él. This is the house in question, no longer one. Shurnukh village is just one symbol of the issue. Many areas in Sunik are struggling with the same problem. We head for Nurkin Honzaresk, where lives of the inhabitants have been upended since the end of the war. Volunteer Sjurig takes us to the very edge of the village. He points out from where he keeps watch over Azerbaijani soldiers posted on the opposite hill. The Azerbaijani presence has had serious consequences, particularly in the loss of farming land, pastures and cattle, which roam by accident over the new border. Villagers like Rulia feel their very existence is under threat. In the face of mounting border tension, the Russian army has deployed to Sunik. Its aim, avoiding any escalation on either side. For many, theirs is a reassuring presence in the province. The war, though, left Armenia badly weakened and Yerevan had to sign a ceasefire deal that was anything but in its favor. Azerbaijan's military superiority was in no doubt, and its president, Ilham Aliyev, has gone on to make repeated territorial claims, including over Sunik, which he calls Zangazur. Hem Qarabağ, hem Zangazur, bizim tarixi Dadababa torpağımızdır. Since May, Azerbaijani soldiers have made multiple incursions into Armenian territory. Their aim, upping the pressure and forcing concessions out of Yerevan. Baku in particular wants a land corridor linking Azerbaijan with its exclave of Nakhichevan and by extension, its ally Turkey. In the face of that kind of pressure, some Armenians are getting involved with defending the nation's borders. Their determination at this training camp is plain to see. To be or not to be? Starting Patrastek. The main conviction among volunteers is that they can only count on themselves. Ambochashara Noritz Larritz. 
Ես լրությունը ինքը նաև ստիպումը Հայաստանում ապրող ծանկացած մարդու, որ ինքը մտացի, որ անանդատ պատերազմը սարերի ետևում չի։ Of those in the exercise, some will be posted to border regions the very next day. One such region is Gegar Kunik, where there have been numerous incidents. It's where several Armenian soldiers have died and others have been kidnapped. In June, we were present as several of them were released. It's a fleeting moment of joy within a bitter wider context. Just 10 kilometers from here, the daily lives of the inhabitants have become unbearable. One of the released soldiers who's since left the army tells us of more recent events. <laughs> Armen Budoyan is considering leaving Armenia. He wants to give his children a future far from war. Yeprem Markarian left the training camp. He now trains reservists in the Armenian army. But for all too many Armenians, the future has never been so uncertain. Our reporter, Luke Schrego, is still with us. Luke, thank you for that insight into what's happening in Nagorno-Karabakh today. Um, would it be fair to say that Azerbaijan is now basically doing whatever it likes? Well, you have to say that for Armenia, defeat has its consequences. Uh, it's been a very major change in the balance of power from when Armenia was the powerful uh, nation during the 90s war. And it's been a very bitter pill for uh, Yerevan to swallow. Azerbaijan has been completely emboldened by its gains, what it's been after for, for so many years. And we've seen it's the outcome in those border incidents in, uh, in its holding the prisoners to almost use as bargaining chips, really. Now, there has been international criticism uh, over the last few months of uh, what's been going on, but it's been muted, to say the least. Even with the Russians, with the presence of those peacekeepers there, they have a very fine line to tread. Russia's very happy to have regained its stature in the region to be able to uh, to say it's it's in its own personal backyard. It's always seen it as such. But but it does, it's negotiating in terms of trying to keep Azerbaijan happy. It doesn't want it alienated, despite its obligations under the collective uh, security treaty that it has with Armenia. Now, Azerbaijan also knows that uh, pr Prime Minister in Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, is extremely weak. We were there for the legislative elections back in June, and there was a choice between him and uh, his main competitor, and Armenians chose to go back with Pashinyan, because a return to the old days of the corruption weren't what they sought, but that doesn't mean that it's uh, really a resounding mandate for Pashinyan. Uh, he's still hold, uh, beholden to the terms of the ceasefire deal, which Azerbaijan and Baku, they are trying to force him to, to put into effect. And this is all the means to try and uh, to keep the, his feet to the fire, as it were. Uh, it's left Armenians really feeling alone, disencouraged, and uh, really worried about their future. Let's take a listen to one other person that we spoke to while we were down there. She was uh, in one of these border regions and has been confronting some of, the, uh, some of these goings on, on a daily basis almost. <laughs> Նստած հույսով սպասում ենք, որ գոն է կամ փոխատություն, կամ մեր անասունը հետ կվերադարձն են, կշարունակ ենք ապրել, բայց եթե չլինի, էլ ստեմ էր ապրել իմաշ չունի, ինչով զբաղվես, որ 
Artin egazet gortsedes. Luke, I'm wondering what the situation is right now in the Gorno Karabakh. Tell us more. Well, after the end of the war, people did start returning home uh, after they'd fled during the conflict. And Nagorno-Karabakh now exists as it is, thanks to the presence of the 2,000 Russian peacekeepers who have a mandate to be there until 2025. Now, there are still questions over the ultimate status for Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, it's uh, With Armenia having lost its uh, bargaining chips in those seven regions, it's now position negotiating from a position of weakness. And it's unlikely that Azerbaijan is going to cede any ground in terms of where it's sitting now in a position of strength. Uh, it's left these deep questions because the Russians are only meant to be there for another four years. And with Armenia not having diplomatic relations with either Turkey or Azerbaijan, it remains to be seen really how any talks are going to take place to negotiate over this issue. And with just four years left until the Russians' mandate is supposed to end, there are deep questions over the future for people and uh, the, the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh as we move forward. And so hence the dangerous tension that's still there. Luke, I know you'll be going back because we need to keep across this story. Thank Thank you. You can see Luke's report along with Ashwin Verdian and uh, Abdallah Malkawi again on our website, france24.com. This is Reporters. I'm France 24. Stay with us most of all. Please stay safe.